Well, our next team up here on the Open Alliance show is going to be our friends from the Netherlands, team number 4481 team, Rembrandts. Once again, reigning world champions, as I like to say, come back from the 2019 game. And they have been doing an amazing job documenting their process here in Rapid React. Tons of YouTube videos out there, so make sure you check them out and see what they're up to. But we're going to get the updates as we go into week four here. Uh, so if you don't mind, can you just introduce yourselves and let us know what you do on the team? Yeah, hi, I'm uh, I'm Lawrence. I'm uh, like uh, this is my third year on the team. I'm in the steering committee, so I help uh, organizing stuff. And um, yeah, happy to be here. Hi, my name is Renska. I've been a part of Team Remembrance for about four years now, and my role within the team is uh, the student lead for uh, um, department manufacturing and facilities, which means that I'm responsible together with two mentors for the workshop and assembling the robot. Well, speaking of that, we're going to be going through uh, doing a live walkthrough of some of the things you all have been working on. As mentioned, we'll show a few YouTube videos as well, too. But give us an update. Where are you at right now? And then uh, let's go take a look at some really cool stuff you've been working on. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. Striker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Yeah, um, so at the end of week two, we had just finished our prototype shooter. Uh, we mounted it on a, on a, on a simple drivetrain and uh, tested it. So now, um, after getting our parts for the new drivetrain, we've assembled it, uh, mounted our new uh, our new shooter, and um, started working on testing the first uh, development robot, as we call it, um, which we're doing a lot of uh, cool uh, new controls and uh, software testing with. So uh, I think Renske can go a little bit deeper into the subsystems. Well, if you don't mind, we uh, take a walk to our shop now and we can show you some of the robot. Um, so during the first two weeks of our build season, my department, so manufacturing facilities, has been working on um, the backpack robot, which is essentially just a smaller version of an actual uh, competition ball, which is uh, used for like controls, practice, or like testing, um, and also can be used to like sort of take to events because it's smaller, so we don't have to go through the trouble of you know transporting one of the big robots. Um, we actually have quite a cool video about that, so uh, we can show you that now. So we're going to be looking at the uh, backpack uh, robot thing. Can you describe a little bit about uh, what's like what's going on, what's gone into it, uh, that sort of thing? So this is a very basic version of a drivetrain. It basically only has uh, the basics, the wheels, and then the electronics so it can drive. Um, the coolest, coolest thing about this drive tray is that we actually got um, custom-made wheels and we um, have thread to go on it. And um, that's, this is the first year we've been working with that. So uh, we hope to test that out and see if it works better than the pre-made wheels we usually get. Um, you can show some of the controls if you like. Yeah. Um, so for our new drive train, we've upgraded from the... Neos onto the Falcon 500 for in the drivetrain. So we have gearboxes with uh, two of them. These ones are only mounted with one. And uh, we've been upgrading to some new rev control system and uh, including the radio power module and um, the Pigeon IMU, still the first version, not the second one yet. And um, yeah, so we're testing out these new mechanics and testing out these new actuators and uh we've been really happy with them so uh i think it's here to stay let me ask you about the the backpack robot in general like you know why, why build a smaller version of what you're you're doing is it just for testing like what i guess one advantage you get out of it versus just building like a whole the, the exact one-to-one -one scale size so uh, mainly it's because um getting a smaller drivetrain makes it possible for us to make it like a, a general use drivetrain for events, showing it to people around the Netherlands that can't 
uh, that we can bring a full robot to that's just logistically not possible. Sure. Or for just a group of students from the uh, software department to start working on getting driving pads as quick as possible and not have to push a big bot around the, the room and uh, hopefully just get it as light and as quick as possible to start testing. No, that's that's really cool. I, I love the idea of it. And, and of course, as you mentioned in your video, it is the future of FRC fashion. So I definitely agree with that. Uh, as, it's as well too on there. Uh, I, I do have to ask you, I'd be remiss without asking. We've heard some uh, printing noises in the background. What are you working on right now for that? Um, okay. Yeah, I have two Ultimakers. Um, one of them is done with some police and the other one, I don't actually know which being printed here. They just started it? Yeah, they literally just started it. Um, but we basically have two 3D printers running uh, around the clock, getting all of our parts done. So that's all what right. we do here in this corner. Yeah. Because we do a lot of cool. prototyping and we can't like buy new police every so often because it takes a long time to get here. We 3D print a lot of us stuff ourselves to prototype with and then get the final versions uh, from, yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, we've seen, uh, you know, a few things yeah. with the backpack robot. Um, there's a lot that you release in regards to your cat out there and some prototypes from your shooter to your climber and more. What else do you want to show off today? Um, well, I think it's time to take a look at the actual robot that we are preparing to yeah. have competitions with. Um, we always build two robots. Um, we only build one competition robot, which hopefully will get the nice uh, black and orange uh, color. Um, this is just a test bot. Um, for now, as you can see, it's all massive. No, no cool like patterns have been cut out in it yet, so it's quite heavy. Um, for the comp bot, obviously, like the shooter plates and stuff are going to be uh, created with patterns to cut some weight and make it look like really fancy. Um, so again, which is actually quite funny, this drivetrain is really small. It's actually smaller than the drivetrain that we built for the backpack robot. Sure. Um, the reason for this is that shipping from the Netherlands to America is quite expensive and takes a long time. Um, so what we're doing this year is the entire robot is going to be disassembled and it's going to be, uh, we're going to take that in our own suitcases or some extra checked in luggage to um, cut back on some time and also on some expenses. So run me through um, some of the subsystems uh, on this robot here so far. This is absolutely incredible that your team has gone to this. I mean, you say it's not fully decked out yet, but this is something that I think a lot of teams would strive for even before their first competition uh, for things. So run me through, uh, take me through some of the subsystems and kind of what you're doing specifically for each one so far. Okay. so. We'll start with the intake because that's where the ball as well starts. Um, we've been testing a lot with the intake, um, whether to make it rigid or to make it so that it can kind of bounce up and down. And um, we found that making it rigid gives more compressions to the ball, thus uh, increase the you know times that the balls are actually taken incorrectly. Because we noticed that once we give the intake space to bounce up and down, the balls will often just bounce off. Um, which is also why we a prototype with different rollers. You can see here is the orange pyro, mm -hmm. which is 3D printed. And on the other side, we have mechanic wheels. Um, and we're kind of testing to see which one would intake the best and to see which would actually give us the best result. Um, you see the rollers on top of there? The, those are not final yet. They're not like complete yet. Uh, but the idea is to mount some kind of flaps or something like that to it to like when it starts spinning it catches the bouncing balls um so that we can hopefully like kind of get them down to the ground and intake them without any issues so that's mainly it for the intake the next version will probably be um with cylinders uh, pneumatics to like go up and down and then the cylinders will also provide the pressure to keep the intake rigid let me ask on your on your intake wheels with the uh, the the orange. Uh, I'm assuming that's 3D printed, right? Um, yeah. What so that versus the mechanic wheel? Like, what have you seen from testing? Like, and, and when you look at results differences, like what's what has worked better than the other one? Um, from results, we've seen that the mechanic wheels work better. Um, it's mainly because the mechanic wheels 
like push it to the middle better than the 3D printed spiral. So we're probably going to use those, but because the intake is designed in a way that is easy, easy interchangeable, we can always test with different things if we find a better thing later on in the process. Very cool. Well, keep keep taking us through uh, the rest of the robot here. Love to hear about the uh, indexing that you have, and then out into the shooter as well. So the in indexing part is actually um, really fun because after the ball gets uh, taken in by the intake, um, it passes to some extra motors. Uh, we actually have upgraded from uh, 775s on the Talons and Victors to all Neos and Falcons. And um, because they have such a big strength to um, push in balls, and we, we thought like maybe um, if we push in two balls too quickly after each other, they will um, shoot too fast. So what we did was uh, add in a feeder wheel that um, blocks the two wheels from going into the, uh, into the shooter. And we actually started testing with uh, another sensor on the shooter uh, to uh, line up the balls uh, automatically and get them into the shooter wheel as quick as possible. Uh, so now we are doing a lot of test runs, uh, test cycles with this to get those two balls into the upper hub as quickly as possible. And we're also testing with doing multiple speeds, uh, shooting the first one fast and the second one slower to try out shooting in the upper hub and the lower one um, to see what we can get the best accuracy with. So, uh, so like, is there a thought process of like having one ball go in the upper hub and one go in the lower, or is it just, you're just testing to see what works out best? Yeah, well, we started out with um, making the first ball go um, fast enough to go over the upper hub and um, then we started thinking like what if we shoot the first ball up high and yeah. the other one just barely enough that they go over each other and land at the same time just so they wouldn't collide in midair and then we started testing with that and it, it didn't really work out yet perfectly like 100% as we wanted it so we said like okay what if we just drop down the second ball to just a really low speed and shoot it in the lower hub. We get those accuracy, we get the cycle time we want, and we don't lose any points on balls flying out. That, that's something I, I have not thought of in this process at all. I think that's really interesting, especially for, you know, if you look at it from qualification matches, that's an amazing strategy to think about, right? Because that it's all about cycle times and it's all about just how many yep. uh, of the uh, cargo you're getting in, you know, and when you go to playoffs, then you might have to adjust a little bit potentially, but who knows, maybe not, maybe you're able to just cycle that much faster that makes up for that extra uh, point loss as well, too. That's really cool. I love that, that uh, insight, guys. Yeah. If it gets us uh, our 20 balls for that uh, ranking point, I think uh, then that will definitely get us a f much farther away than, than shooting all the way into the upper up. Absolutely. Um, I do want to ask you on video uh, just a little bit ago, we did see some stuff for your climber as well, too. Is there anything that you can show off uh, from your climber? Um, we just saw that on screen. I'd be delighted to hear more about that flip out that you're looking at doing. Um, we don't have a climber mounted on this robot currently right now. Um, because they're still testing with it and sort of see what works best. The main issue they had, I think, was there uh, was too much flex to the climber, as you could see in the video. Sure. Um, so the new climber is uh, with double cylinders, I think. Mm. And then um, we're going to make it a buzzer beater. So basically, we want to try to climb as late as possible and to get that, uh, get the time for more cycles in. Are you still looking at targeting uh, uh, the mid rung currently right now, or have you have you looked at trying going up any higher? Um, for now, um, as explained, I think in the last interview, we um, put the strategy to the lower or the mid rung, yep. depending on our teammates. Um, make a climber that can achieve both, and if we make it to worlds, then we're definitely looking into expanding to higher the higher or the traversal one. Sure. Um, as we start to wrap up here, is there anything else from a programming standpoint you want to talk about or any other features of your progress that you want to mention? Yeah. Um, so because we have now a backpack robot that 
our software team could start programming as early as possible that they didn't have to wait for the development robot to actually get made. We have been making immense progress with creating our own path planning or motion profiling um, uh, software. And we've been actually since week one or two, we've been running uh, running tests nonstop and uh, we're getting closer and closer to hopefully get more and more competitive in autonomous. And that's uh, something I'm really excited about. Awesome. Well, once again, uh, 4481, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about your progress for it. Absolutely incredible to see where you just were a couple of weeks ago to where you are now. Uh, it's outstanding. I love your idea of uh, the, the double shot and the high and the low hub. I love the concept of the backpack robot allowing your programmers to have time for that. So we, we can't wait to see what you come up with by the time your uh, first events come up. Thank you so much for taking time and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.